Department of Justice readies charges versus EJK policemen. Inoculation of minors at hospitals questioned. Galvez admits VAX rollout has logistical issue. The Bureau of Immigration warns versus illegal recruiters anew. Over 200 complete Navodas rehab program. Department of Health urges cooperation on community jobs. Supreme Court's clinical legal education gets funding. A trimming of list of candidates ongoing. Good morning, I am Venice Bautista and you are watching Tribune News on Q. Today is October 21, 2021 and here are the latest news this Thursday morning. The Department of Justice has begun case building against erring policemen involved in the government's anti-drug war after it had found damning information that some law enforcers used self-defense to justify killing suspects. In a 21-page document published Wednesday, the DOJ said forensic evidence in several cases of drug war killings investigated by the Philippine National Police Internal Affairs Service had shown that slain suspects did not fire guns, contrary to claims by the anti-narcotics operatives. This was the explanation of the IAS and the circumstances that led to the killing of 17-year-old Nave Perry Alcantara in Togegarao in August 2018. The suspect sustained three gunshot wounds, showing force appeared to have been used by the police. The paraffin test also showed that both hands of the suspect were negative for gunpowder nitrates. One of the cops on site only received a 60-day suspension while administrative charges were dropped against his fellow operatives. Other cops were merely demoted or suspended for a couple of months, and when Justice Secretary Menardo Guevara spoke in the United Nations Rights Body recently, he said the PNP failed to follow protocols in many drug operations. The majority of the deaths occurred during by-bus operations, Killings were also recorded in the implementation of search warrants or arrest warrants, and some victims were shot at checkpoints. Case records of these operations have already been forwarded to the National Bureau of Investigation for case buildup. Vaccinating minors against COVID-19 inside hospitals only exposes them more to the highly contagious disease former Health Chief and Iloilo Representative Janet Garin said on Wednesday. The former Secretary of the Department of Health questioned why the government opted to roll out the vaccines to minors aged 12 to 17 with underlying medical conditions inside hospitals, which are confined spaces rather than in existing vaccination centers. The hospitals, as we have known, is one of the main petri dishes of the COVID-19 transmission, which means that is where the disease is being transmitted. That's where sick people go for consultation, even those who have yet to know they are infected with COVID-19, Garin said in a television interview. The lawmaker doctor underscored that flow of air is very crucial in places where anti-COVID-19 jabs are being administered. This will overload the already overloaded hospitals, and she believes that they are only the country that are vaccinating our teens in hospitals. Garin also questioned why vaccination of teenagers has to be limited in the national capital region, which is no longer the epicenter of COVID-19 in the country. She urged the government to distribute vaccines that are sitting idle in Visayas and Mindanao regions where access to vaccines remain a problem. While supply of COVID-19 vaccines is no longer a problem for the Philippines, the logistical problem in terms of distributing the vaccine to various regions is now hampering the vaccination rollout, vaccine shower Carlito Galvez Jr. said. He said over the months of March and September, the country experienced problems with supply of COVID-19 vaccines while dealing with a surge in the number of cases. 
However, that is not the case now as the government finds solutions to the new problem, how to deploy and administer the 39 million vaccines in its stockpile to different vaccination sites throughout the country in a shorter period of time. Galvez said they are addressing the logistical challenge at the regional, provincial, and municipal deployment and administration. According to the vaccine char, the deployment period of these vaccines from the national warehouse to different vaccination sites across the country usually takes seven to nine days. So far, the country has received a total of 91.5 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines, including the 32 million which were delivered for the month of October alone. Galvez also said that part of the delivered vaccines are donations from the World Health Organization co-led COVAX, which makes up 24 million doses of the total delivered vaccines. He expressed confidence that the country will be able to vaccinate 50 million fully vaccinated individuals before the end of the year. Tribune News on Q will be back after these short reminders. Botomoto Halalan 2022, the Daily Tribune special coverage. Magandang araw mga katribu! Narito na ang mga makakasama nyo tuwing umaga sa programang Gising Na. Roy Pelovelo, Comfy Manalo, Atty. Lia Badilio Crisostomo, Vernon Velasco, Kim Sancha at Chirk Balagtas. Abangan ng programang Gising Na mula alas 8 hanggang alas 9 ng umaga sa Facebook page ng Daily Tribune. Ilabas ng mainit na kape! At samahan kami sa inyong pag-almosal, mga katribo. Sama-sama natin alamin ang mga natatagong istorya sa mga latest na kaganapan sa loob at labas ng bansa. Simulan natin ang bawat umaga with good vibes sa mga informative and recreational segments ng aming programa. Maaari nyo rin ibahagi sa amin ng inyong opinion via Daily Tribune Facebook page at Tribunal sa YouTube. Makichika na rin sa latest showbiz happenings, mga katribo. Kaya naman, magkita-kita po tayo mula lunes hanggang beres, alas 8 hanggang alas 9 ng umaga. At magsama-sama po tayo sa... Gising na! Botomoto Halalan 2022, the Daily Tribune special coverage. We're back on Tribune News on Q. The Bureau of Immigration has once again reminded the public, especially those who are aspiring to get jobs abroad, to be wary of illegal recruiters providing dubious and fake documents. The recent warning came following the statement of BI Commissioner Jaime Morente that two passengers disguising as tourists were intercepted at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport Terminal 3 earlier this month. Morente disclosed that the passengers, whose names were withheld for their protection, attempted to board an Emirates Airlines flight to Dubai last October 7, 2021. In the incident report by the BI Travel Control and Enforcement Unit officers, it disclosed that both passengers were first-time travelers holding fake company identification cards and certificates of employment under a certain apparel company. Morente said that the two intercepted passengers initially told the BI secondary inspectors that they were sent by an apparel company to attend training as sales representatives in the United Arab Emirates. However, the BI officers found inconsistencies in their statements and later, both passengers eventually admitted that their real employment contracts are to work as household service workers for a manager who is working in said apparel company. Morente also noted that their travel documents were only handed to them by the recruiter at the airport prior to their flight. The BI chief reminded aspiring overseas Filipino workers to check first with the Philippine Overseas Employment Administration to ensure that they will not fall victims to human trafficking. Morente warned recruiters who falsify documents to deceive BI personnel are committing full violation of the law that is punishable under the Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act. The two victims were immediately turned over to the Interagency Council against trafficking for assistance and further investigation. 
About 219 people who used to be illegal drug users have graduated from Bidahan, the community-based treatment and rehabilitation program of the city government of Navotas yesterday. Of this number, 13 are children in conflict with the law, and the former PWUD, or people who use drugs, underwent six months of online and limited face-to-face -face counseling conducted by the Navotas Anti-Drug Abuse Council in partnership with Narcotics Anonymous. Meanwhile, 41 previous Bidahan graduates completed six months aftercare program and 10 finished 18 months of follow-up counseling sessions. Mayor Toby Tianco said that they are glad that his Navotenos d decided to change their ways and are also happy for their families and loved ones. He told their graduates to feel free to reach out to them or their counselors anytime. Changing for the better is difficult, but the LGU is here to support them as they strive to overcome their challenges. Representative John Ray Tianco, on the other hand, reminded the graduates to think thoroughly whatever they decide to do. He said that graduating from Bidahan doesn't mean the end of their problems, that every day would be a struggle and they need to think carefully what to do next as they continue their journey towards becoming responsible and productive citizens. The Department of Health in Central Luzon is urging parents and guardians to have their children immunized against certain diseases as part of the agency's thrust of community-based immunization. DOH Officer in Charge, Regional Director Corazon Flores, said that the agency aims to protect every child from various diseases amid the coronavirus disease 2019 pandemic. She added that the health department plans to conduct community-based immunization since face-to-face -face is not yet allowed and the routine immunization and catch-up vaccination will be conducted until December this year. Under the community-based immunization, all grade 1 are children under 67 years old and grade 7 or 12 to 13 years old will be vaccinated against measles, rubella, tetanus, and diphtheria. In addition, grade 4 or children aged 9 to 14 years old from the provinces of Nueva Ecija, Pampanga, and Zambales will also be given human papillomavirus vaccines. Meanwhile, all children aged 23 months and below who miss their primary scheduled immunization shall be included in the catch-up vaccination for routine immunization to protect them from diseases like from measles, mumps, polio, and hepatitis B. Tribune News on Q will be back. Stay with us. Botomoto Halalan 2022, the Daily Tribune special coverage. Halalan 2022, the Daily Tribune special coverage. You are still watching Tribune News on Q. And in other news, clinical legal education in law schools nationwide got funding support that would enable the effort of the Supreme Court to develop and promote it in law schools nationwide. The Governance and Justice, or Go Just, program has started its funding program to support law schools that are challenged to implement their own clinical legal education programs. The SC said at least 1 million pesos per year for two years will be made available for the successful law school whose grant application will be approved by the Governance and Justice. The funding facility is open to both public and private law schools, whether stock or non-stock corporations. Non-governmental organizations that can manage the funds for the law schools are also eligible to apply. 
Those interested were given until last Tuesday, October 19, to send their expression of interest, and they have until October 20 to submit their proposal development training using the template of the United Nations Office for Project Services. The deadline for submission of proposals is on November 3. In 2019, the SC and Bank adopted and promulgated AM No. 1903-24 SC Rule 138A Law Student Practice or the Revised Law Student Practice Rule. The revised rule is an amendment to the existing provisions of Rule 138A of the Rules of Court. The guidelines were issued pursuant to the revised rule, which allows externship in courts as a means of complying with the clinical legal education programs of a law school. The spokesman and director of education and information of the Commission on Elections, Attorney James Jimenez, said that the trimming of the list of candidacy has already commenced. In an interview over our morning show, Gising Na, he said that they will release a tentative list by October 29. However, the final list can be expected by December. Well, no, uh, nagsimula na yung proseso ng uh, pagtitrim ng ating, uh, ng ating listahan. Um, by October 29, maglalabas tayo ng tentative list. Okay. Yung uh, unang, uh, unang labas natin, ano, ng mga malamang ay eh, uh, maaring ma mailusot. Pero hindi pa yan ang final list kasi siyempre ongoing pa rin yung mga hearing patungkol sa mga Nuisance candidates. Meron pa rin tayong mga kandidato na maaring matawag na Nuisance kaya ang final list natin ay expected pa sa around December. Well, no? uh... Released candidates can check for any typographical or clerical errors and have them corrected. And for Nuisance candidates, they can defend their candidacy, but if the COMLEC decides it, it is final. Attorney Jimenez said they have the right of recourse and can take their case to the Supreme Court, but these cases usually do not prosper. As for substitute candidates, COMLEC has only found two so far, but Jimenez said it is still early. The deadline for substitutions is on November 15, and they are expecting that more substitute candidates will be filed. And that wraps up the stories this morning. Before we go, we would like to thank the SM Store, Department of Tourism, Ernada Center, MG Motors, Hina Motors, Security Bank, and Overseas Community Affairs Council member Alan Lin of Republic of China for their continued support. Again, this is Venice Bautista and you are watching Tribune News on Q. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay at home. Good morning. Botomoto Halalan 2022, the Daily Tribune special coverage.